The Angel Next Door Spoils Me Rotten, Volume 1. Seiki Sand Cover Art by Hanakoto. Chapter 14 Christmas for Two. When Mahiro arrived at Amain's apartment the following day, she seemed a little restless. It would have been perfectly understandable to be nervous about visiting the home of a member of the opposite sex on a holiday, but that didn't seem to be it. Mahiro wants to play games. She's probably just excited. Apparently, this would be her first time ever playing a video game. In some ways, she was like a sheltered highborn young lady who knew little of the world at large. Before we play, I'll make lunch, okay? Mahira confirmed. Mm. I'll have mine well done, please, Amain answered casually. I know, I remember. Even dealing with such a demanding customer didn't seem to dampen the girl's mood. With a flutter of her apron, she headed for the kitchen and began preparations for lunch. From the way she was behaving, Mahira seemed to be quite pleased. Amain felt a little awkward and embarrassed about how much he had been looking forward to this. It's just because I'm looking forward to enjoying the games, that's all, he told himself. It certainly was not that he had been excited about spending time alone with the next-door angel. As he watched Mahira's ponytail swaying back and forth, Amain smiled wryly to himself. How are you supposed to hold it? After lunch, the two of them settled on the sofa in front of the TV. Both were now looking straight at the screen. When Amain had asked her what game she wanted to play, it became apparent that Mahiru didn't even know where to start, so he'd booted up a well-known 2D game and handed her a controller. Unfortunately, Mahiru immediately got flustered as it became apparent that she had no idea what to do with it. Ah, uh, okay, so you move around with this joystick, and you jump with this button. Mahiru, usually so calm and collected, was looking back and forth between the controller and the TV as she manipulated her character on screen. It was obvious that this was her first time. She charged straight at the enemies without dodging, dying over and over again. Amain began to wonder if perhaps there were things even an angel couldn't do, though she did seem to be gradually improving, if ever so slowly. I can't win, Mahira professed. Never mind clearing the stage, you haven't even defeated the first enemy, Amain observed. Oh, shut up. Well, it's just a matter of practice, you gotta keep trying. Get that muscle memory. Amain warned Mahiru that it would be a challenge, but she didn't seem ready to give up. It was charming to watch the girl tackle the game with such a serious expression. Amain couldn't help but smile. Unfortunately, Mahira was just too much of a beginner and kept on losing. Eventually, it was obvious that she was growing frustrated. As she shot a glance at Amain, he could have sworn he heard a game-like sound effect accompany her sullen face. Ah, here, you need to do it like this, Mahira was sure to lose interest if she continued to metaphorically bash her head against a wall, so Amain put his hand on the controller she was holding and tried to physically show her what to do. Amain had cleared this game on countless occasions, so he was able to help Mahira get through tough spots. Surprisingly, Mahira was actually worse than the average player. Most people wouldn't have gotten stuck nearly as many times as she did, but Amain kept that thought private. Look, this enemy moves at a consistent speed in an irregular pattern, but. If you watch here, he moves toward your character and speeds up as he approaches. Just watch your timing and jump. Amain put his hand over Mahira's smaller one and gripped the controller to manipulate the character on the TV, showing her how as he explained. On the screen, the game character moved as Amain had said it would, avoiding the oncoming enemy. It wasn't much of a move, but it was apparently enough to impress Mahiro who let out a small gasp of astonishment. Her eyes, rimmed with long lashes, snapped wide open, and her expression brightened. The two were sitting closer together than they ever had before, and Amain noticed for the first time that Mahira's lower lashes were fairly long, too. Smiling, he watched Mahira happily play. As Amain admired her beautiful profile, Mahira turned toward him, possibly because she'd felt his eyes on her. He'd needed to get close in order to be able to reach the controller so the two had ended up far nearer to each other than either had expected. Their arms and hands were even touching, and Amain could feel Mahira's breath lightly grazing his skin. Amain found himself surrounded by warmth and a faint, sweet fragrance. As sorry, Amain suddenly realized that his hands were almost completely covering Mahira's, and he pulled away in a panic, while Mahira's eyes darted around the room as if she had only just realized they were touching at all. Blinking dramatically, Mahira replied, No, it's fine. I'm the one who should apologize. The girl's cheeks had flushed scarlet, and Amain was filled with regret over what he'd done. Mahira wasn't a fan of physical contact. No matter how used to each other they had gotten, having someone touch her hands like that had probably been too much for her. 
Thankfully, while she looked fairly embarrassed, she didn't appear upset or angry. Really, I'm sorry, Amain said again. Um, I'm not that bothered by it, Mahira said. Don't you hate physical contact? I was surprised but not upset. It's not like you're a stranger. It seemed that today, the magnanimous angel had seen fit to forgive Amain's transgression. Relieved at how easily Mahira let it go, Amain restarted the game. Fixing his eyes on the TV screen, Amain got ready to help Mahiru make some real progress in the game this time. Then he saw that her character had fallen off the stage a rather predictable outcome. Amain was seriously beginning to wonder if he could do anything to help her get better. In the end, Mahira somehow managed to clear one level, whining all the while. The two of them agreed that was probably a good stopping place for the time being. If Amain kept making a total beginner face death, it would have a considerable effect on her motivation. His plan for now was to get her to try another game and loosen up. Mahiro, you're tilting. To that end, next Amain had suggested a racing game, since that had some grounding in the real world, but Mahiro was leaning with her entire body. There was no gyroscopic control element to the game, so there was absolutely no need to physically move around. Amain wasn't sure whether Mahiro even noticed what she was doing, but she swayed left and right with every turn she made in the game. In contrast to the earlier game, this one was all about driving a car, and Amain had thought it'd be easier, since pretty much everyone understood the concept of driving to some degree. Playing through the tutorial also might have helped, because even though Mahira's driving was a bit clumsy, she was able to handle the actual gameplay. She was trying her absolute hardest to perform well. Her body swayed this way and that while she maintained a very serious expression. This is ridiculously cute, Amain thought. Mahiro was strangely adorable, rocking back and forth like a pendulum. Her intense focus and effort only made her look even cuter. With every turn, Mahira's body automatically leaned way to the side. Eventually, she tumbled right onto Amain's lap, and he was forced to choke down a laugh. You really don't need to tilt your whole body, you know, he said. I it wasn't on purpose, Mahira replied sheepishly. Yeah, I know. But still, you were leaning pretty far. Mahira sat back up, somehow keeping her trembling, pouty lips in check. The girl had felt soft and light when she'd accidentally flopped on him. That much was to be expected as Mahira had a small build, but she was so slim that sometimes Amain worried she might snap in half. Roused out of Amain's lap, Mahira's cheeks were flushing, and her body was trembling, likely from embarrassment. It was times like these that the girl really resembled a small animal. Finally, Amain couldn't stand it anymore, and he burst into a fit of laughter. A are you making fun of me? Mahira demanded. No, no. I was just thinking how charming you are. So you are making fun of me? You think I'd mock someone while they're trying their best? No, but. See? You were just very cute, that's all. When you say cute, I'm sure you mean childish. There was a bit of a peevish overtone to Mahira's words, and Amain was worried she might get depressed if he teased too much thus he decided to keep any further thoughts to himself. He flashed Mahiro a half-smile in response to her expression of disapproval, and she quickly turned away. Any trace of the angel's gloomy mood vanished instantly when she returned to the game. Her intense concentration overrode everything else on her face. It was becoming clear that she was getting used to the game, as she was managing to keep up with the other cars, if a little awkwardly. Amain had been right to assume a more familiar concept like steering a car was better for Mahiro. She did still veer off course into the dirt or slam into a wall a few times, though. Amain had been worried she might end up running the whole course backward, since she'd never played a game before, but he was relieved to see that she was making better progress than he'd expected. Trying to play the racing game together with Mahiro proved to be a little difficult, as she kept distracting Amain without realizing it. As she tilted her whole body back and forth with the game, she occasionally leaned right into him. Each time she did so, a lovely scent would waft over him, making it difficult to keep his composure. Even with the unusual handicap, Amain still managed to maintain a huge lead. They were competing against the weakest computer opponents, after all. How are you so fast? Mahiru inquired. Practice and experience, Amain replied. After playing the game so many times, Amain knew the course by heart and understood how to best navigate the turns. Even with Mahira's outside interference, he was able to seize every advantage and hold the lead without much trouble. Glancing back at Mahiro, who appeared utterly dumbstruck, Amain quietly switched the game to solo mode and dropped out of the competition. 
Mahira didn't have enough experience, so Amain thought it'd be better to play together after he let her practice by herself for a while. It was better that she got comfortable playing against computer-controlled characters rather than feel disappointed over losing to Amain. Thankfully, it was clear that Mahiru had no shortage of determination, and she stared enthusiastically at the screen even after going to solo play. With an attitude like that, Amain was sure she would quickly learn to hold her own against a computer opponent. It was obvious what a hard worker she was, even with something like a video game. Such perseverance was rather charming, but whenever Amain let a smile slip onto his face, Mahiru would quickly take notice and slap his knees in protest. If he laughed too much, amused by her protests, Mahira would frown and grumble, Amain, you idiot. I won. After two hours of dogged perseverance, Mahiru crossed the finish line as the words first place flashed across the screen. She turned to look at Amain, obviously proud of herself. After a hard-won battle with the racing game, Mahira had achieved the glory of finishing first. Though she'd ended up in last place on so many earlier tries, Mahira had refused to quit and kept going, improving her ranking bit by bit until at last, she won. Such investment had probably made the victory quite emotional. Mahira's expression seemed to proclaim I did it, and Amain dutifully clapped in admiration. That's great. I could tell you really tried hard, he praised. Yep. Perhaps because Mahira was enjoying the praise, her usual demeanor had softened, and she appeared a little bashful. She didn't break into a huge, obvious grin but instead wore a fleeting, shy curl of the lips that looked ever so slightly pleased. It seemed so sweet that it was hard to believe it belonged to the same cool, reserved person. Recently, Mahira had been acting more like a regular teenage girl and less like a perfect young lady. Today most of all, she was really acting like a kid. Her cherubic smile had something innocent about it, and looking at her, Amain felt his sense of reason begin to give way as the roaring desire to hold her close rose within him. The urge to pet Mahira like a cat seized control of his arm, and before he knew it, Amain found himself reaching out toward her. Is something the matter? Mahira asked. Quickly, Amain regained control of his wayward limb. Ah, and no, it's nothing. You really got good at this, H huh? I'm getting better? For sure. You're way better than when you first started. Thank you. It was a lot of fun, so I guess I got pretty engrossed. Mahira chuckled to herself. Amain avoided making eye contact by crossing the room and retrieving a small box from a basket on the shelf. Let's say this is your prize for first place, he said. Ah, um, that's really not. If you don't like the idea of a prize, then think of this as something left behind by a stout old man with a white beard and a red suit. It was a Christmas present that Amain had carelessly forgotten to give Mahira the day before. Since Mahira's birthday and Christmas weren't that far apart, Amain had expected some difficulty picking out this second gift. Thankfully, he'd also gotten a little more familiar with the practice, so it surprisingly wound up not being as tough to choose a Christmas present as it had been finding one for Mahira's birthday. Mahira blinked rapidly, as if the reference to a Christmas present had just reminded her that today was in fact Christmas, and she nervously accepted the box. At Amain's urging, she carefully undid the wrapping. Well, it's nothing special, though, Amain thought. She opened the box and slowly took out the gift. It was a leather key holder. Expecting Mahira to feel uncomfortable if Amain got her something too expensive, Amain had avoided getting a fancy brand name item. He'd selected this one purely because the design seemed like it would suit Mahira. It was simple, with flowers and ivy carved into the leather, making it perfect for everyday use. Amain wasn't too well versed in flowers, so he didn't know exactly which ones were featured in the design, but he thought their dainty forms suited Mahira well, and that's why he'd chosen it. Well, I gave you my spare key and all. If you don't want to use it, that's okay, too, Amain said. No, I definitely will, thank you. You've got a better sense of style than I expected, Amain, Mahira replied. What do you mean, better than expected? I mean, normally you just wear sweatpants or jeans. It's not like you're into fashion or anything. I just don't own anything besides functional clothes. Getting dressed up in nicer outfits was a tedium that Amain avoided whenever possible. He'd never had the occasion to show Mahiro what he looked like in better clothing, so she'd only ever seen him in his school uniform and casual house clothes. It was no wonder she assumed he had no fashion sense. Such a guess had been right on the money, and Amain didn't seem likely to dispel that slovenly impression anytime soon. If you made an effort, you'd probably look pretty good, you know? You kept up your appearance in middle school, didn't you? Mahira asked. That was because my mom forced me to. 
wait, how do you know, that? Shihoko sent me this picture and said, here's what he could look like if he tried. Unbelievable. Amain was shocked to see the photo of the time his mother had dressed him up and brought him to work. Silently, Amain cursed his mother's indiscretion. That style didn't suit me. I suppose you're right, Amain. You know, you never make eye contact, and your face is always hidden behind your hair, but I think you have rather distinguished features. Mahira's small hand stretched out toward Amain's face, and her white palm brushed against his forehead as she pushed his long bangs upward. She was looking at him with a curious expression. He didn't think his face was anything to marvel over, it was perfectly ordinary, not quite ugly and not quite handsome. Amain began to wonder why Mahira was staring so intently at him. What is it? he asked. Nothing. Your eyes look livelier than they used to, that's all, Mahira replied. Without looking away, Mahira reminded Amain that several months earlier, his face had been vacant like a zombie's. While Mahira continued to stare, Amain was beginning to feel uncomfortable that a girl, not to mention an incredible beauty, was staring at him so intently. He wondered what she found so fascinating about his boring looks. Eventually, he couldn't stand it anymore. Amain slowly reached out and brushed a lock of hair away from Mahira's own lovely face. He was hesitant to touch her, but she had reached out and touched his hair so casually that he thought she'd probably forgive him for doing the same. It would only be the faintest moment of contact, surely that much would be all right. But wow, she really is beautiful. Mahira was much prettier than the glamorous models in the magazines that had previously been scattered around Amain's room and much more appealing. Something about her felt amazing every time he looked upon her. Photographs, Amain knew, couldn't be trusted anyway. Even if they could capture a moment of beauty, preserving it in time, photographs could be made to deceive. Mahiro, however, was standing there before him in the flesh. Her beauty was real, unadulterated. Amain didn't think he could ever get tired of beholding such a creature. As Amain continued studying her features, Mahira's eyes started to shift, and she pulled away from him dropping her controller. Amain wondered what was bothering her as she hugged a nearby couch cushion tight against her chest. Um, so, right. I have a Christmas present for you, too. Um, oh, thanks. Amain was about to ask what on earth it might be, when Mahira cut him off by pulling out a nicely decorated gift bag from her purse. Hastily, she pushed it into his hands. All right, I'm going to prepare dinner. Huh? Why you are? With those words, Mahiru quickly stood and moved to the kitchen. Amain was left with nothing but bewilderment at the overly rapid development. After Amain finished washing the dishes from dinner, he returned to the living room to find that Mahira was restless. She was sitting beside him, in the way they had recently grown accustomed to, but this time, Mahira was having trouble maintaining her composure. She'd been averting her gaze all through dinner, too. This was a kind of self-consciousness that Mahira had seemed previously incapable of, prompting Amain to wonder if something had happened. Perhaps it had something to do with her giving him the gift? When Amain had given Mahira the teddy bear, he, too, had felt like running away, and it had been difficult for him to calm down. Maybe Mahira was experiencing a similar sort of anxiety. By the way, can I open this? Amain asked. P please do. Amain picked up the gift from where he'd left it sitting atop the coffee table, and Mahira nodded somewhat hesitantly. Concluding that she was indeed nervous about giving him a present, Amain untied the ribbon fastening the bag. Right away, he could tell from the feel and weight that it was something made out of cloth. When Amain pulled it out and saw it to be a length of black and white houndstooth, he wasn't sure what it was. After spreading out the whole object, however, he immediately understood. A scarf? It appeared to be quite soft and luxurious. Surely, this would keep him warm if he wounded around his neck. Well, you're indifferent to fashion, and you always seem cold on the way to school, so. I can really use it, and wow, it feels so nice. Quality is important when you're choosing something that you'll be using every day, Mahiro explained. As Mahiro was someone who only wore high-quality clothes, Amain was sure she knew what she was talking about. Mahira seemed like the type who considered it a waste of time to buy cheap things, preferring to use well-made products that would last for a long time, instead. If this scarf met her standards, it had to be very nice indeed. Amain could tell just by touching it that the scarf had a luxurious texture and was soft enough not to bother even sensitive skin. Impressed with Mahira's high standards, Amain waved the gift at her while she watched him with a stiff expression. Can I try it on? Amain asked. I gave it to you, so you can do whatever you like, Mahira answered curtly. Roger. 
Amain smiled at her blunt response and wrapped the scarf around himself. He could feel the quality of the fabric even more on his neck, where the skin was more sensitive. It kept all the warmth in without letting too much air pass through. The feel of the fabric was soothing and snug. As Amain was still inside, it was hard to tell just how effective the scarf would be, but he trusted it would undoubtedly keep him comfortable throughout the winter months. Wow, it's super warm. That's great. Amain put on a gentle smile, and Mahira answered with a relieved smile of her own. Recently, Mahira had begun to show Amain her many kinds of smiles more frequently, and he found himself staring again at her enchanting features. When she looks like that, she really does seem like an angel. Sure, everyone at school said Mahiru looked heavenly, but Amain thought it was far more attractive when she smiled like this and showed her true self. Wh what is it? Mahira had noticed that Amain was staring straight at her. Her eyes shifted left and right before fixing themselves back on the one gazing at her. Nothing, I was just thinking that you seem much more relaxed compared to when I first met you. Is that so? Mahira looked surprised, and Amain laughed a little. Yeah. Before, you were all stuck up and not cute at all. That was terrible of me, not being cute, Mahira said sarcastically. Come on, don't sulk. Now you're way more. How should I put it? I think you just look better. I was thinking that the way you smile now is way cuter. It's really kind of a shame you weren't smiling like that sooner. Mahira had always been beautiful, but some quality of that changed in how she carried herself. The angelic smile that she showed at school had the beauty of something to be appreciated from a distance. It was a fragile thing that was not be touched. The cold look that she'd first given a mane held the appeal of something wreathed in thorns to keep humans from getting too close. Now her soft and innocent smile had a welcoming warmth that made a mane want to caress and cherish her. A mane thought about how Mahira had changed. She'd slowly gotten used to being around him, and she'd slowly opened up her heart. As he thought back on the time they'd spent together, Amain felt a ticklish sensation gradually rising through his chest and up into his cheeks. I'm happy that you can smile so naturally now, and that you've gotten used to hanging around with me, and what are you doing? Amain's sentence was physically cut off as Mahiru lifted the scarf up from around his neck to cover his face with the fabric. She didn't wrap it tight, but it grew a bit stuffy and hot as the material trapped Amain's breath. Please just be quiet for a bit, Mahira commanded. What for? Nothing. Amain didn't understand this sudden outburst of eccentric behavior. He grabbed the wrist of her hand that was holding up the scarf and pushed it back down. With his vision restored, he could see Mahira's flaxen hair and the tinge of color spread across her cheeks, and he noticed that she was trembling slightly. As she looked at him, she grew even more flushed. He wondered why she was making such an odd face, and then it suddenly hit him that there could be only one answer. Don't tell me, you're embarrassed? Shut up. Mahira turned away sharply, which only served to confirm what Amain had said. Without meaning to, Amain smiled as he mused that the angel sure could be prickly about things like this. Mahira groaned and quietly muttered, I'm going outside for some air. Then she quickly made for the veranda. Through the window, Amain could see it snowing just like it had the day before, but Mahira didn't seem to care and stepped out onto the balcony anyway. Chilly air rushed into the apartment, and Amain shivered. Though Mahiru immediately shut the door, a touch of cold still hung about the living room. Amain let out a quiet sigh. It's fine for her to run away to hide her embarrassment, but she could at least do it in a slightly warmer outfit. Mahira had obviously picked her clothes assuming she would be spending the day inside or at least wearing a heavy jacket if she went out. She'd clearly prioritized looks over warmth, and her slender body was sure to chill quickly in the cold. Amain cursed under his breath and picked up the blanket that was lying over the back of the sofa. It's super dangerous to stand outside in the snow wearing such thin clothing. After pulling on his coat, Amain followed Mahira out onto the veranda and wrapped the blanket around her shoulders. Getting some fresh air is fine, but you'll catch a cold like that, chided Amain. Mahira quickly turned to face him. Isn't that my line? Clearly, she'd calmed down, as she'd answered with her usual demeanor and expression, though there was a bit of a sulking tone to her voice. Maybe she was feeling down because Amain had said something that called back to the conversation from when they'd first met. Humph. That only happened because I didn't get in a bath and warm up like I should have. Simple negligence, Amain reminded. Next time you get soaked like a drowned rat, make sure you warm yourself up right. If I'm there, I'll be sure to toss you in the bath myself, Mahira shot back. What are you, my mom? There were definitely times when Mahira said some rather motherly things. 
With a smile, Amain recalled his first encounter with the angel. It had been around the time autumn usually started getting cold, about halfway through October. He hadn't expected to come down with a fever just from getting a little wet, but the weather had gotten chillier, far faster than it usually did back in his hometown. Thinking back on it, Amain admitted to himself that perhaps he really had been careless. The most surprising part of the whole situation, however, had definitely been Mahiru nursing him back to health. You know, it's already been two months since we started talking, Amain said wistfully. You're right. And to think, your room was so dirty. It was terrible. Now it only haunts my memories, Mahiru quipped. Oh, hush. I'm keeping it clean now, right? And who do you owe for that? Why, Lady Mahiru, of course. It makes me want to bow down in humble gratitude. You don't need to do that, geez. Back on that rainy day, Amain would never have believed that he and Mahiru would get to a point where they could banter like this. It all seemed so long ago now, but really, it had only been a short while back. A lot had changed in those two months. Time had really flown by. A silence fell over the two, and suddenly, everything was quiet. The snow, which had been starting and stopping in fits since yesterday, was now drifting softly down from the sky, painting the surrounding apartment buildings in a pale hue. A main and Mahira's building was in residential area, plus it was Christmas, so the area was hushed. From some apartment nearby, the pair could very faintly hear the sounds of a Christmas song, though not well enough to decipher any lyrics. Mahiru exhaled a little white puff, and Amain's ears caught that sound better than any other. It's kind of a strange feeling. Mahiru was the one to break the silence. At first, I was wondering what's up with this guy. Well, I guess that's not surprising. Anyone would be suspicious if someone suddenly forced an umbrella on them. What do you think now? Hmm, let's see. I'd have to say, you're a whole lot of work. Mahiru turned away after her ambiguous answer. You're not wrong. Amain smiled while leaning against the veranda railing. You know, I never thought that we would get close enough to be eating meals together like this, either. To be honest, I always thought of you as someone to be admired from a distance. I never considered ever getting involved with you. That was certainly honest, though I knew that already. That's precisely why I trust you, Mahira said, and her body shook with laughter. Amain knew that Mahira only accepted him in her life because he wasn't attracted to her, and apparently, she felt the same way. Still, I'm glad that I got to know you like this. My life has really improved a ton, I'm happy because I get to eat delicious food every day, and I feel at ease when I'm hanging out with you, Amain declared. You really think so? I do. I'm incredibly grateful for these past two months. Thank you. Amain couldn't have been more sincere if he tried. It was thanks to Mahiru that his standard of living had gone up and that he got to enjoy a delicious meal every day. Surprisingly, Amain had also discovered that he could enjoy talking to a girl without any sort of awkward expectations. It had even become something he looked forward to. Even better, Mahiru would occasionally flash him adorable reactions when Amain teased her, and he never got tired of those. Recently, she started to laugh more, too. As Amain had realized before, Mahira had indeed started displaying a richer array of emotions, a change that only made her more endearing. Amain would never actually act on his feelings, of course, but, just looking at her made him feel at peace. Mahira's eyes were wide, and Amain couldn't tell whether the slight redness in her cheeks was because of the cold or because she was embarrassed. No, thank you very much, she said. But I didn't do anything. From Amain's perspective, Mahiru was the one who'd done everything for him. He was sure he hadn't given the girl anything in return, but she slowly shook her head in disagreement. I'm grateful for things that you aren't aware of, Amain, Mahiru explained. Hmm. Each of us telling the other what we're thankful for has sort of an end-of-the-year vibe. I guess that's not all that weird, since the year is about to end. Curiously, both Amain and Mahiru had thanked the other for certain things, despite the new year still being six days away. Mahira's eyes sparkled at the mention of the end of the year, and she let a little laugh slip out. Ha ha, that's right. It's still a little early, but, Happy New Year, Amain. Let's make it a good one. Yeah, Happy New Year. Amain nodded and smiled at Mahira's heaven-sent proposal. Then Mahira suddenly said, I'm freezing, let's go on inside, shall we? She turned around and opened the glass door that led back to Amain's living room. Amain caught a glimpse of her ears, which had turned bright red in the frosty air, and he agreed that it was best to retreat inside so as not to catch cold. One way or another, I guess I've also taken a liking to this lifestyle. That's probably why my chest feels so warm. 
As he followed Mahiru back into the apartment, Amain watched the gentle swaying of her soft, flaxen hair and smiled secretly to himself. He hoped that in the days to come, he would continue to see more of the angel who lived next door. Afterward. Nice to meet you. My name is Siki. I trust you enjoyed the angel next door? I set out to write this book as a heartwarming, slow but steady, fluffy little romantic comedy, and I'm pretty sure I managed to do just that. Both characters started out rather distant and cold, but they gradually came to trust each other and found themselves charmed by the other before they knew what was happening. It was quite enjoyable to write those changes in their emotions and their relationship. I think it's good to have those kinds of stories where people slowly get to know each other, too. As for what I want to say through my work, well, I think slow and steady is just the best. That's what I have to say. This work underwent some revisions in the time between it first being published online to when it was made into a book, but honestly, Amain and Mahiro aren't quite focused directly on each other yet. The real fun begins in volume 2. I'm still going to take things slow and steady as the series continues, but I plan for them both to take steps toward the other. Both characters having unrequited love is the best. I gave our heroine Mahiro her nickname of Angel, but it was the illustrations that really made her live up to that nickname. My thanks to Hazano Kazatake. You really made Mahiro, aka the school angel, even more charming. Actually, when I met with the head editor, I happened to put forth the idea that Kazatake would be good for the illustrations. Imagine my surprise when. I heard the offer had been accepted. I was so excited to work with a master whose drawings I'd admired for so long. Thank you so much for taking charge of the illustrations. You can tell from looking at Kazatake's incredibly charming illustrations, but every character in this book is cute. Reviewing the final drawings was almost too much for me. The angel actually looks heavenly. I am just brimming with gratitude for your incredible work. Well then, we've come to the end, but I still need to express my gratitude to everyone who's helped me along the way. To the lead editor, who put so much effort into getting this book published, to everyone in the GA Books editorial section, to everyone in the sales department, to the proofreaders, to Hazano Kazatake, to everyone at the printing office, and to all of you who've picked up this book, I extend my humblest gratitude. As I lay down my pen, it is my sincerest wish that we will all meet again in the next volume. Thank you so much for reading all the way to the end. Thanks for listening, if you want more books, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the like button.